Thank you, Ben. Oh. A friend of mine took his three-year-old daughter to the museum in Brooklyn. And as she walked in <coughs> holding his hand, she looked around at one of the paintings and she said, Wow, Daddy! I've never seen one of those before. And they went from room to room. She pointed the sculptures and said, Wow, I've never seen one of those before. She walked through a door and the automatic doors opened for her. And she said, Wow, I've never seen one of those before. He brought her into the restroom, into the men's room with him, and she pointed at the urinal and said, Wow! <laughs> I've never seen one of those before. <laughs> she was practicing what I like to call beginner's mind. I, that, that innocence, that vulnerability, that awe, where everything, everything is special. Everything is possible and everything is unique. That concept that I don't know what this is. When you see a baby, a little older than mine, they can reach for something, not know what it is, and they'll instantly put it in their mouth or try and do something with it to figure it out. And that beginner's mind is a place where everything is possible and nothing is limited. But because of our lives, because of our training, because of our teachers and our parents, because of our own ego, we get to the point where we go, oh, I got that. <laughs> I actually was walking with my son, we're walking our dog the other night, and he's talking about school, and he goes, you know, I'm just, they only trying to teach me things I already know or things I don't need to know. <laughs> <laughs> How's that working? <laughs> and my job is just to listen to him. Not to fix him, not to correct him. For him, it's right. right? For him, that's where he is. And it gave me the, the pleasure, though, of going, oh, I am so grateful that I understand in small glimpses sometimes that I need to be in beginner's mind, that I want to be curious, and I want to be taught new things. In fact, I like to take it so far as to say, I'd like to be proven wrong. <laughs> I oh, what I think to be proven wrong. To have that world, my limited view of what the world could be, shattered open and see it as something else. Whether it be a role we all play, the way politics are supposed to be, what we're supposed to do for a living, or how money's supposed to work. What if all of that, everything you thought about that, you could let go of? You could let go of that idea that you already know what it is. They're trying to teach me stuff I already know. Well, yeah, no one's going to get into that. What if we all could say, I don't that pure place of vulnerability and intimacy. Because when we don't know, we allow others and other ideas to get close to us. We allow other things beyond the shell. When you install a beginner's mind, you let go of all the things that you think you know, all the logic all the brilliant opinions and all your cherished beliefs about how things are, how tough life is, how great life is, how rich other people are, how hard it is. And ask, is that so? What is this? We put it into our mouth, into our consciousness, into our little hands and try and figure it out. That's not easy, but it is the first requirement to the pathway to permanent prosperity. Because what I've noticed in my life and what I've observed in my job of observing life is that often we have breakthroughs, realizations, aha moments, 
and then we fall back. Right? We go back, our lives get better for a while, we see some amazing progress, and then we slowly and inconceivably, unaware that we're doing it, fall back into our old default paths. The pathway to permanent prosperity that I talk about in Absolute Abundance and that we're talking about today is about constantly staying in that state of beginner's mind. Constantly staying in a place where we know that the person sitting across from us actually has something to teach us. No matter what they're saying, no matter what they're doing, no matter what, not only if they're just being positive, but when they are actually complaining at us about us, <laughs> the really hard one, telling you to your face what you're doing wrong and how they don't like it. <laughs> or you. <laughs> or that thing you do. Sometimes they're indistinguishable to that other person. Right? To go, oh, what have they got to teach me? What have I got to learn in this moment? And in that place, we come to a place of, I call innocence. Innocence to be able to learn. Blank slate. Often, the beginner's mind is described this way and by one of the major Zen teachers. In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities. In the expert's minds, there are only a few. Right? And we study that here. It's like the board and I are always like talking about, oh, the latest survey of what church growth says and how to do church and how to reach people. And the truth is, Unity San Francisco is going to be its own unique recipe. Amen. There will be no other church like this. Wow. How wonderful. There will be no other Sunday like this with this unique and special combination of Ben, of Michael, of me, of Roma, and of you. Right? This unique combination where we all get to interact, to share each other's energy and thoughts and enthusiasms, questions, aggravations, pain and grief, each other's sorrow, tears, this Sunday will never happen again. And why do we then keep trying to replicate them? <laughs> right? It will never happen again. We can stay in this beginner's mind and know this is it. Right here and right now. Often in prosperity teaching they tell you that the way to prosperity is gratitude. Right? And gratitude is a great, great vehicle. It's a great engine for changing your life. But I like to amp it up, like Paul Hasselbeck always talks about, amping it up. And I want to talk to you today about the difference between gratitude and appreciation. You may think they're exactly the same thing, right? Really, Ken? The difference between gratitude and appreciation? Isn't that splitting hairs? Well, my perspective on it is this. When we're grateful, how many people have heard or practiced it, making a gratitude list at the end of the night, right? Not a bad thing to do, right? Sit down at the end of the night and say, well, I'm grateful for my home, for my bed I'm laying in. I'm grateful for the food I had today and the success I had, or I'm grateful that the day's over. <laughs> I made it through it. All of those gratitude list items usually, usually, not always, but usually, are about some overcoming, some obstacle. And in fact, they are contrasted. I'm grateful for my home and for my bed that I'm not sleeping outside. I'm grateful because I walked by that homeless person and I'm, that's not my life. I'm grateful because the place I'm in now is better than I was last year, last week, last month. And it brings with you an energy of compare and despair. It brings with it an energy of, oh, I'm hanging on. Oh, I should be grateful because look at this. But there also brings up a subtle energy, a vibration of not enoughness, 
of worry of compare. And it's subtle. You don't even notice it. But there's a vibration associated with appreciation that doesn't require you to have anything. To own it, to possess it, to embody it. I can appreciate the beauty in Roberta's face. Ah, see how hard that is, huh? <laughs> I can appreciate that beautiful Rolls Royce up front. I can appreciate the Lamborghini that drives by me. They're not mine. They're not something I necessarily desire or possess, but I can appreciate the incredible detail, the beauty, the artistry, the divinity in them. The divinity in someone else's face, someone else's smile. The absolute beauty in a hair color. <laughs> it's gorgeous. <laughs> the beauty in someone's outfit. Their words, a song, a note of music. And in that vibration of appreciation, we become more aligned with the divine. In that vibration of appreciation, we become more aligned with our true purpose, which is love. When we can walk down the street and see the homeless person and appreciate the beauty that they are. We can walk down the street and see the trash and see, God, that is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece of paper. <laughs> I think I'll pick it up. <laughs> or you walk down the street and see the totality of the street, not see the traffic jam, but see the whole sky and the day and the beauty of the traffic going by. Rather than seeing the pothole. Actually, when you're in that vibration of appreciation, you literally do not see the other things because you are only attuned with seeing beauty, not comparing it to anything else. And when you are in that appreciation, that state of appreciation, that state of being in love, you become attractive to those things. You don't have to work at it. You've already done the work. And the things you need, want, desire will show up and you get to say, oh, isn't that pretty? Look what showed up today. Look what's here today. Wow, I what, what, wonder what's going to come tomorrow. I wonder what my life is going to be when we shift from gratitude list to appreciation list. Is there any limit to what you can appreciate? You may ask, well, what about death? <sighs> what about disease. What about war? But in that attitude of love and appreciation, you see the beauty of those moments. I've shared this with you before, I believe, but I think it bears repeating. When my brother-in-law's mother was dying, he was racing to get to her bedside, driving from another city, and I was happened to be there. And I walked into the room before he had made it. And she was 90 pounds of that and crying, just tears streaming down her face. And she said to me, oh, <clears throat> tell Keith, tell Joey, how sorry I am, sorry I am. I worried about all the wrong things. I worried about all the things that don't matter. Please let them know how much I love them. Let them know how wonderful they are and how grateful I am to have had them in my life. In birth, when you're that little, and in death, when you're at the end, it makes no difference what the little stuff is, what the daily stuff is, what the compare stuff what makes a difference is that appreciation. To appreciate life on an incredibly powerful level, from the innocence of a baby to a person who knows that this may be my last breath. 
And nothing else matters. Nothing else matters at all. Then you can appreciate and not resent. You can appreciate and transform. You can appreciate and be. Be the divinity that the world so needs. Be so grateful for it all. It doesn't mean that we stop dreaming, that we stop trying to achieve, we stop manifesting. But we live in a place of appreciation for everything that is, and our lives transform. Laura mentioned earlier J.D. and Mai's journey to parenthood. And yeah, as Paul has like talked about in his daily word today, there were some roadblocks. There were some obstacles, seeming roadblocks. There were some obstacles to the path. And it's really funny because um, a lot of people, when we were on the journey, we were very public about it because that's part of the process. You tell everyone you know that you're trying to adopt because you never know where the baby's going to come from, as evidenced by Roma. You never know. But in that process, then, people love to tell you the worst adoption <laughs> story <laughs> ever <laughs> in their life. Oh, you're trying to adopt. Well, my second cousin and her husband were trying to adopt, and they went through blah, blah, blah. And for the first couple of times, we sat there shell-shocked. <laughs> as people thought it was helpful to tell us these stories. <laughs> right? I was like, ah, uh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> and finally, J.D. came up with a wonderful, wonderful line. And he would stop the mid-sentence. He could see it coming a mile away. But he'd stop the mid-sentence and say, thank you for sharing. But we have decided to focus on the positive. <laughs> that we know all these things, and we still know that our good is coming to us. And that there are wonderful stories out there, too. And there certainly are. But that idea that we need to appreciate even the obstacles and to stay steady seeing only the good has permanence and residence in my life our first attempt at adopting ended when i was minister at fremont and uh, the community there was so supportive and it was a hard experience the woman that was going to get us her child didn't. And I'm sorry, I'm taking a pause because I want to figure how I want to say this. I didn't plan to talk about this. In that moment, in that instant of pain, I felt and I believed that we had been financially scammed. Right? And I sat in the pain and in the anger of that. I felt those emotions. And I got on the phone with Reverend Deanne, and she was praying with me. She called to see how I was doing, and I was crying. And she got on the phone and she said, Ken, good given in the world is never lost. And I went, oh, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I teach that all the time. But I needed to be reminded of it in that moment because I was in pain. I needed to be reminded that my intentions, my appreciation, my giving of that money and that time and that effort were given for good. And that only good would come back to me. That that was my karma. That I needed to stay focused on my side of the street to stay in appreciation for all that there is. To stay in appreciation for all that could be. And when we did that and stayed the course and stayed focused on that, my life transformed. My life changed. And I got to stay in beginner's mind. I didn't get jaded. I didn't get bit, uh, bitter and resentful. 
I stay open to be able to share love and joy and peace with another family and other children. You know, there's, there's also an amazing quote from another Zen master. It is the mind that is innocent of preconceptions and expectations, judgments and prejudices, full of curiosity and wonder and amazement that receives. The pathway to permanent prosperity is through that mind, through that teachable, open, appreciative mind. And our call to you today, no matter what you're going through, is to appreciate each other, to appreciate life, to live in that vibration of love, love for everything, no exceptions, no exclusions. Think about it. It's really kind of fun to appreciate Donald Trump. Wow! That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. <laughs> it's really kind of fun to appreciate all of life in that way and stop making everything and others wrong. Today, we have a pathway, a way to achieve permanent abundance, prosperity. And it's right inside our own mind. We need to go nowhere else, but go back to the beginning, to become the beginner. Let's take this to our time of meditation. <laughs> outside yourself that you think is not right, wrong, bad. And send it appreciation. Vibrate in love for this thing, person, place. Transform. 
transform them. It. By the renewal of your own mind. Now, think of something you adore. And see how amplified that appreciation can be. Resonate, vibrate, be appreciation on the deepest level. And in the silence, watch as this appreciation fills your heart, your being, and this whole room. I am so appreciative for your love.